Hi guys, Ken here. I'm on my way to Vulture Island. It's a couple miles. It should be an interesting hike. I'll be camping among the dwarf palmetto. That's what you see behind me. There won't be any level spots and the ground's rather wet, so I'll be hammock camping rather than camping on the ground. Also, there may be a few snakes and the feral hogs could surprise me in the middle of the night. And so, if you dare, come join me. I think you'll like the adventure. However, put on your orange gear first. It's hunting season, and you don't want to accidentally get shot. Okay, this is it. Over there is Vulture Island. I'm going to walk around here until I can find a spot where the water is low enough that I can easily get across. Normally the water is about 10-15 feet higher than this, but due to the drought I can more easily get over to the island and, one of the, and be one of the few human beings to have stepped foot on the island in recent years. Oh look! I'm not the only one walking along the bank. Look at those little footprints. Okay, this is it. This is the place I can get across without even getting my boots wet. Yeah, I made it! Okay, it's your turn. You could easily get lost in here. I'm sure glad I have a GPS. The fruit of the dwarf palmetto provides an important wildlife food source. They taste like dates. This looks like a good spot to set up my hammock between this tree here and that one over there. Okay, I set the hammock so that I can easily sit in it and use it as a, as a swing. Uh, one side is about a foot and a half higher or two feet higher than the other side. That way when I put my head, I'll be um, uh, more level. Okay, the hammock's pretty much set up now. I've attached the tarp and you can see here it's separately connected from the hammock down below and then the tarp also tied to trees. I try to use natural objects like trees rather than steak. Anyway, that's what it looks like and uh, it's time for me to grab a snack to eat before I go looking and seeing who else is here. Hear the crows? Yeah, they're welcoming me. The vultures know I'm here. They're uh, settling in a tree right above my tent. This is exciting. I can watch them all night long. Or at least just that when the moon comes up, it'll be really interesting to see them. There aren't any human-made trails here, so I need to follow the paths of the little animals. And uh, they're kind of hard to see, but you can see the paths if you look carefully down below the palmetto. Oh, look. Rabbit droppings, rabbit pellets. Look at these. Isn't that interesting? I found my way back to camp by looking for the dead tree with vultures on it. Okay, I first put 
alcohol in the stove. It's okay to spill it around the edges because you need that to burn on the outside to pressurize the container. So once you've got the stove as full as you want it, then just use your flint and the fire should start. There it goes. The flame is clear and so you won't see too much of a flame. Alcohol has a clear flame and once it heats up a little bit then I'll put the burner on it and um, you'll see the flame shoot out of the nozzles once it's pressurized. Okay, now that the, the vessel is pe pressurized and so I'm going to put the burner on the top and then we will uh, commence cooking. Let me get it level here. Yeah, that should work. We will commence cooking and in just a few minutes the water will be boiling and it'll be time to cook supper. Pour the water into my dehydrated rice, my dried rice, and dinner. In, a, in about 10 minutes I'll have dinner. The rice and um, chicken are really good. Mmm, you should have some. Here, have a taste. I uh, want to show you how you get into your sleeping bag when you're in a hammock. You can't do it by getting into the hammock and then crawling into the, the bag. It just doesn't work. What you need to do is to get into the bag first. You just crawl into the bag first and then once you're in the bag, hop into the hammock and close it up. Let me demonstrate. Okay, I'm getting into the bag, so you can see the bag down there. And there's my other foot in the bag. And then I just zip it up and put it around me. Then sit in the hammock. Throw your feet over. Close the netting. A few of those little pesky creatures have been biting, but this will keep them away. And I am going to have a good sleep tonight, so we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. The vultures were still on their roost tree when I woke up. There it goes. Oh, that's nice and hot. Vultures play an important role in cleaning disease out of the environment. Virtually all bacteria and viruses are eliminated when passing through the digestive system of a vulture. I'm right under the roosting tree now, and you can see uh, vulture poop here, all of this white stuff. It's so clean that it could be used for hand sanitizer. There's nothing like cleaning your hands with vulture poop. Guarantee it doesn't smell. It's good stuff. Try it. You gotta, gotta get under a vulture tree. It's time to pack up. I hate to leave these woods, but I'll be back again. Before I leave these woods, 
let me say a blessing for the vultures. Thank you for allowing me to camp near your roost. This is a special place where few humans are allowed. You are important creatures from which human beings can learn a great deal. You don't kill, but rather eat what is already dead. Recycling life that has been lost is an honorable role and is critical to Mother Earth. You eliminate virtually all disease from the environment. Your poop is so clean that it can be used for hand sanitizer. And it doesn't smell. Too bad the human species doesn't share this attribute. You can glide through the air on thermals at 20,000 feet with hardly a wing flap. You are a model for the fixed wing aircraft that human beings use. You have excellent eyesight and can see food from miles away. In addition, the turkey vulture species has the unique attribute of being able to smell food from great distances. We human beings can only express wonder and awe over these abilities. You are playful and social and fun to watch. You communicate by hissing and grunting and flapping your wings. You know what you are doing and you know who is in charge. When I return in the future, please recognize that I will do you no harm. I promise to watch, listen, and learn from your wisdom.